Hey, we've regrouped and we've got another way to attack this uh, seat pan and cowl making a custom fiberglass seat. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So what I've done here is over the course of this week I have been gluing these foam blocks. I used the same ones I had before uh, but I tore that white styrofoam off the bottom uh, because that just simply was not working out. The spray adhesive uh, which was Krylon Quadruple 7 was not working and was melting that white styrofoam. There's a little sample of it that's left. Don't use that stuff for multiple reasons. Um, so just to kind of revisit what my faults were, let's uh, sum it up. First big problem was that white styrofoam. It flaked off, you know, you couldn't just carve it or shave it without getting balls of styrofoam coming off and too rough of an edge. Uh, second fault was using that Krylon adhesive Where's that can? This stuff, don't use it, quadruple seven. Um, it melted the white styrofoam and resulted in a very poor bond between the green florist's foam and that white styrofoam. Uh, and the white styrofoam was what was giving me, my hope, was a real rigid base to the whole thing and really holding it all together. It didn't work. Uh, and so then the question is how well did this work holding the green foam together? It was just okay. Um, so what I've now moved to is simply a you know wood glue. And there isn't a whole lot of difference between this, I think in this application, and just white school glue, uh, you know, or Elmer's all-purpose glue. And um, what I'm a little concerned about with this is it dries hard, and so as I'm carving through glued seams, I may run into some problems there. Uh, but I think what the key is going to be is to have very sharp tools. Uh, sandpaper is not going to have a problem getting through that. Um, but when I use a, a knife or a plane, they're going to need to be sharp to really shave through the glue. The foam is going to give up easy. Um, so there's my thoughts on what the failure was before and now what I'm doing to attack this is just use all green foam. And so as you can see I'm using a clamp and just something heavy to uh, hold pressure on these pieces as the glue dries. I've actually been working on this one piece or two or three pieces at a time throughout this whole week. Uh, I would come home from work, glue a couple few pieces together, put them in the clamp, and then, you know, go be with the family and go back to work the next day, come back from work, glue a few more on. And uh, what I think would be most helpful here that I don't have would be a larger clamp that could run the whole length and or two of them. And if I had that, I could have done this all... Well, like the whole base in one shot, and uh, and then just you know put a weight on the top for the hump area, and uh, you know it, that would have worked better. The other thing uh, you may notice, I'm reusing my old foam. I did not go and buy new foam. I, I'm just taking random pieces. I've still got some here. You know this thing doesn't have to be pretty at this stage. It's going to get uh, very cut up and what you have to imagine is the, um, the seat pan within and all of these rough outer edges are going to be cut away or sanded away. While I'm waiting for glue to dry I'm cleaning up this master cylinder. I'm going to try to use this because again I was riding this bike and this master cylinder was stopping the bike just fine. So what do I need? I need a rebuild kit here. I need to clean up some of that corroded brake fluid. And I'd like to see if I can get just this new 
reservoir. Um, I gotta think that that's available somewhere. Uh, and then yeah, new new kit and rubbers for the plunger there. I'm missing this outer seal, but got good travel and it's smooth. We'll just get a cheap kit, and re, re uh, rebuild it, and paint it. All right, I'm back outside here because I'm about to make a mess, and uh, just put a little tape on the underside to give it a little added rigidity. Uh, again, all of these pieces are glued together with that wood glue, but um, you know this bottom base isn't going to change, and so threw some tape on there. So I'm totally covering the frame rails from front to back, and then some. This thing just happened to be glued on there as a test. It's no intention there other than to give just a little bit more length back this way. And I've got enough volume for my rear hump there. You know, could this be done in a cleaner manner? Yeah, absolutely. But all we need is the, the seat within. So the lines that are most important to me are five and a half inches up off of that rail. So as you can see, I didn't need much of these blocks up here, but I did need just a little something beyond this. You know, maybe I won't, but I'm only at five and a quarter at the top of that block. And then another line that matters to me this guy. And I'm going to want seat pad here, so I want to go here. I'm going to go up the middle of that, actually. Can dig that. And extend this out. And then I know that the absolute rear of this thing is here. So, if you can imagine, into that effect and then we'll round it so let's get some major material cut away I think I need to make some of these lines on the other side down while I'm trimming, but I do need to get these sides trimmed. Just a light touch here. And I got a couple smaller ones for up front.
Now, before I get too committed on the back end here, I want to make sure I'm all the way forward, which I'm not right now. So I got some trimming to do on the front. Now you can kind of see where we're going. When you get to the seams where you've got that wood glue, the wood glue is hard. And uh, I don't know, this may not be the best adhesive, but uh, I'm able to cut through it. Just, just need a sharp knife. There, I got things snugged up better now. Now we can start cutting away here. So one thing I'm learning is I want to use the big broad chef's knife as much as I can just because I want to get large pieces off uh, cleanly because this is making a tremendous mess and I've gotten the plane out a little bit and uh, the amount of green foam dust that comes off of that is just incredible. And this just keeps that to a minimum. But I gotta be careful because this is really aggressive. And uh, one thing I've learned too that be a nice tip for you guys if you're going to do this is keep a trash can nearby and as I collect a handful of these I just go straight to the trash with them and contain them thing gets loaded up, I just take it to the trash. I've brought my workbench, this, this uh, portable Black & Decker bench out here, um, just so that I have a flat surface as I try to flatten this out. And uh, on the bike I've got, you know, only the frame rails holding it. And I just didn't want to, it's starting to get fragile and I didn't want to break it. Uh, so I needed better support underneath. That's why I moved to this, just to flatten here. So my eye is telling me that's still a little too tall. Let's get the tape measure out. Yeah, I'm still six inches tall here. And then another line we don't have quite matched up yet is this guy. We got more material to remove there. But I don't want to get too aggressive. I'm taking my time with this because all the material I shave away here is space that I'm losing under the seat for my battery and electronics. I've been spending a bunch of time just worrying about the edges and making sure that I'm you know, not coming in shorter than the di or, um, yeah, the width of my frame rails and not you know cutting off too much at the back. And so now that I've got it the right width all the way back, the right length, I'm pretty darn sure I'm close on the height. I think I may have to do a little bit more there. Now what I'm concerned with is I want to get this thinned down. It's still a little too thick for me. But don't forget that the bottom of this mold 
uh, is not necessarily the bottom of your seat pan. I can, you know, trim the seat pan around the bottom edge and lower it when I'm done, but uh, I do want to bring it up to meet the tank, and so, you know, this is a limit here. Uh, I don't want to bring that down. So, I want to get it close, and then here I want to have a nice flat surface for the backside of my backside, uh, and to mount that uh, upholstery piece, because you're going to have a seat that's obviously right in here, uh, but then round out the back. So I'm thinking round here, flat here, but round here. Um, that's kind of now it's sculpture, and I don't know that I'm up to the task, but I, I'm going to give it a swing. For the back of the seat, this is the angle to take, and uh, you know you can see I've got a nice rounded edge coming up here. But then I start to cut in here. Um, that was an error on my part. I I think I got too aggressive there. So I'm going to have to even this out back here. But I still may be saved because I don't know that I'm back all the way this way to meet with the uh, line of my frame rail. So let me check it against the bike. Yeah, I'm okay there. Because <clears throat> at this point, this line, I want to continue into upholstery. So I really want that much to be upholstery. So I gotta come back that far yet to this halfway mark. And that's gonna get me to here where I still have a, a good shot at uh, that line. So I'm going to just work on removing that material. I may just take my broad knife now and cut. I'm nervous about this though because I can't put the material back on. The closer you get to finished, the more delicate it is. Okay, this is getting really difficult now. There's a lot of lines to be paying attention to at the same time. So I got this line, and I want that, you know, to match up. Then I've got this arc from back here, and I want that to be knee, 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 you know? Like, and flat. So that's the other piece is from here. I want this flat. Right now it seems a little tilted this way. So that's kind of the three planes I have to be thinking about uh, on the seat and then I can worry about this stuff back here. I'm, I'm not even done there. No harm in bringing out components for a visual reference. Clearly I have enough room here. And uh, that tray, of course, underneath goes even lower than that. So I think I can lower this thing down. I'm pretty much done here. Got things pretty smoothed up around here, so I've got a nice union with the tank. And now I'm just trying to get this even and flat as best I can. The glue is hard. I think that's it. Let's take a look at this. So good line there with a gap for the upholstery to follow the the frame rail up. I think I'm a good shape back here. Looking pretty straight here. Nice flat plane here. And even 
you know, not this way or that way, but flat, and round it on the back. You know, maybe a little touch up here and there. This spot looks high to me. I think I may just round and lower that. But I'm uh, pretty much done. I was glad I had put some tape on the back side or the the underside of this because it's gotten so thin now that when I was bringing it in, of course, the glue gave away there. So that tape is holding everything in place. And now that I've got things lined up here, I'm just going to put a little more on. And uh, there's only one more step, and that's to put a little ridge around here that'll frame in the um, seat pan real nicely. And for that, I'm just going to use some vinyl tubing, um, outside diameter is about a quarter inch, a little bit less maybe, and uh, in millimeters, about six millimeter outside diameter. Okay, so there I've got it, you know, I've got a ridge all the way around, and that'll create a nice little tray within which all of the um, upholstery can go, and I think that's going to be it for today. Okay, so we've got a finished seat pan here, at least a mold for one. Uh, next week we're going to finish this up and prep for fiberglass and we maybe even will put some fiberglass down on it and uh, get going on our seats. So we're making some progress. Hey, as always, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it, each and every one of you. Uh, please give me the thumbs up or subscribe and we will see you next week. Thanks for watching.